Smart man. Being a little closer to class. <laughs> For the rest of you guys, you guys are welcome to zoom in as well. This way you guys can see the notes right in front of you. I am gonna to try to get the laptop part here as much as I can so that you guys can just pull laptops from there and, and do it. All right. Functions and graphs of functions. So you guys already know when we use the X comma Y that this is a relation, right? There's a relation because there is an input and there is an output, right? We have an input, the X here is my input, which is known as my domain, which my domain is all possible X values. It's also known as the independent variable. Wow, that looks awful, doesn't it? Is it D-E-A-N-T or D-A-N-T? Independent. E? Okay. Okay. So, and remember how when we made tables to for graphs, like when we find points, you're like, so X can be anything? Remember that? Well, X can be anything because it is the independent variable. It's independent. It can be anything it wants. Where the Y... Right, we know this as the output. Which is also known as the range. Which is all possible Y values. Which this is known as the dependent. variable, which makes sense, right? Because it all depends on what you input is what you output, right? I drink a bunch of water, doesn't mean I'm gonna get half number two. I drink a bunch of water, it's gonna be number one. Input, output, it depends on it, right? The story that you guys have heard that have had me, I talk about Ruby Tuesday. I ate Ruby Tuesday and then I had two outputs, right? Where my body wasn't functioning. Uh, so that's why the output or the range is the dependent variable because it depends on what you input it is what is going to come out. Okay. You're not going to be able to put an apple into a grinder and beef is going to come out of the other end. Make sense? All right. So X independent, Y dependent. Now, the biggest part about this whole thing is, is Jonathan is going to come into the meeting. No, the biggest part is I'm actually going to do this. Ding dong. I'm actually going to throw that over there because I want to talk more about input because majority of the time I'm going to need to be able to find domain and not necessarily 
the range. I know, I know you guys can't do this on your on your on your notebook. Sorry. So you have to be able to find the domain. No matter if you're given points or function or graphs. Okay, no matter what you're given, no matter if it's points given, functions given, or graphs given, you're gonna need to be able to give me the domain. Now, points and graphs, they're easy, right? Points, axes are axes, y's are y's. We know by input, we know why our, our outputs, no big deal. Graphs, it's easy. I just gotta take the parabola, plan it out, done, right? Or take the parabola, squish it together, done. I know what my domain is there right however functions is where we start to have some issues because it's a bunch of numbers and variables so how are we going to find those so in fact i'm going to do these and move the rest of it up there in fact let's do this Okay, so with functions, what we want to tend to do, we have we're going to do this. We're going to assume that the domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're going to assume that it's going to be all reals. All right, so these means the same thing. What is going to hold this back? Anybody? What will hold this back? What would make a function you know the fact that it's not going to be negative infinity to positive infinity? There's only two things that will hold it back. Fractions because the denominator cannot be zero, right? What's the other one? Square root. And if there was a third one, it would be square roots in the denominator of a fraction, right? So with fractions, why I know with fractions is that fractions, my bottom cannot equal to zero. If you guys want to get mathy about it, the denominator cannot equal to zero. And with a square root, anybody? Yes. What is? I'm going to use a word here that you're like, what the is that? The radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. It can be zero only when it's in the, in the denominator of a fraction is where it cannot be zero, right? So square root, the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. Do we know what the heck a radicand is? <laughs> or like, what in the, 
to the Radigan, right? Professor yes. Chan, it, it, yes. is that the number under the square root sign? It is, it is. So let me go ahead and put that as an example here. So there's your square root symbol and the radicand is this thing right here. Wow, that looks awful. Would that help? Okay, so that's the call the radicand. It's the stuff underneath the radical. <clears throat> Any questions on that? So far, so good. All right. So how about functions? So we need to also know or be able to determine if a give something given is a function or not, right? So we need to determine a function. Let me see. Determine if it is a function or not. When given points. So if I'm given points, how do I know if it's a function or not? Okay, so again, back to my example of Ruby Tuesdays, right? One input, two outputs, right? Body not functioning, right? So If X repeats not a function, how about with a graph? And with graphs, so it, if it fails the VLT, not a function. And the VLT is a vertical line test. <clears throat> All right, what if we're given an equation or a function? Uh, I, no, I shouldn't call a function when it's function. Let's just do equation. How do I figure out if an equation is a function or not? How do I determine if a function is a function or not? And it needs to be square. We can't call without subtraction. It's like playing Mr. Potato Head. You're putting the, you know how like kids would like plug their eyes into the into the head head socket, and it looks like eyes for ears. So how do I figure out if a given equation is a function or not? No graphing necessary. You're going to solve for y. Uh, 
Is there any X that would give you more than one Y value? Are you wondering when that would happen? Are you guys wondering? Okay. Remember the key point here is the, the part that we, we use in, in college algebra would be when we solve for y and we saw a plus or minus. You guys remember that? Okay. Whenever we saw a plus or minus, we knew it was going to give us two y values. So, for example, if I was to do, I'm trying to think of, um, So with this, we can take the square root of both sides, right? But the problem is that anytime I take the square root, what do I need to do? And I do the same to the other side, but what happens? Professor Chen? Yes? Do you add plus or minus? Mm-hmm. Anytime you physically take the square root, you have to add the plus and minus. And right here, yes, this is obvious that any X value is gonna give me multiple Y values, right? And the reason why I say, are, is there any X that would give you multiple Y values? Right, it's kind of like doing the vertical line test on a circle and you're putting the vertical line on the edge of the circle. It only crosses one point. But like I asked you when, when that happens, and I said, well, a student's gonna say, put it, put the line here. Can I call it a function? I said to you, well, I will reply that question with another question. And that is, if you're if you heard a rumor that your significant other is cheating on you, are you only gonna check one social media? And then all the answer will be heck no. I would check everywhere. Right, because your goal is to check to make sure that every single possibility, and you're essentially you're on a on a tear to prove that this relationship is no longer functioning. Same thing with a circle; you're putting it in the center because you know it's going to cross two or more points, or two points, not more than one point, I should say. Okay, are we okay there? Oh, look at that. Perfect. One page. That will print out perfectly, beautifully. All right. Let's talk about function notation. So what is the key part that I always talk about with function notation? Replace the with the
So they're trying to get fancy on, on you guys. So if it's y equals, they are calling this implicit form rather than the explicit form. Hopefully the blue matches the blue and the red matches the red for you guys. I was going to be like, Walter, well, you leave us so early? You just got here. So obviously, function notation was done for a reason, right? Function notation was done so that you guys wouldn't get confused on which function is being called for. Dang it. Oh, well. It's okay. We'll make it work. Right? So, excuse me. So this way, if I said y is equal to 2x minus 3, y is equal to um, 3, and y is equal to um, 7x squared minus 4, right? Or uh, let's go plus 4. What the heck? Right? If I tell you, hey, when x is equal to 2, what does y equal to? You'll have no idea which equation to use. And that's why function notation came about, right? Function notation said, OK, since we let's clarify which equation is which. So let's use function notation so that we can actually determine which function we're actually looking for. So we decide, so they decided to replace the y's with things like f of x and g of x and like h of x, right? So different letters determine different things. So this way I can say, hey, I want you to find f of three. So if I say f of three, you know which function I'm actually talking about. So in this case, I know that this is going to equal to two times three minus three. So f of three will equal to three, right? So whoever thought that that was gonna happen. So don't forget that this still comes out to be a point on the graph. The input and the output are on the same line here, okay? This actually gives you a point of three, three, right? You guys understand that? What is a G of two? Well, oh, don't tell me that confused you guys. It's also a three. Yes, and it gives you the point two, three. Excellent, okay? So understand that. Now, the thing that usually confuses most of you guys is if we were given a graph. Why do I always draw it this way? Let's draw it this way. Pooper scooper. Yeah, why not? That'll work. So what if we're given a graph, right? And I'm gonna call this graph f of x. So please tell me what is f of five.
And of course, some of you guys go, how in the world did he just get that? It's okay. So one of the things I always say to you guys is, hey, when I look at F of five, I have no idea what it's asking for. And I'm going to say to you, look at something smaller. So just look at just the five. What the, the, the heck does five mean? What does five stand for? Well, absolutely. The five is actually my X value. That's my X value, okay? So let me go ahead and erase this really quick. And if I was to translate what this is trying to say, this is trying to say, when I try and translate this to English, it would say that, hey, what is Y when X is five? That's what it's actually asking. So my X value being five is right here. Actually, let me do it this way. And my Y value is one. So that's the reason why f of five is equal to one. So what is f of negative three? It'll be zero. Any questions on that? Are we okay? Yeah? Okay. So let's move on. So again, with function notation, you gotta be able to find the answer or find a solution where you're given a function and also when you're given a graph or given an equation and given a graph. All right, so we need to talk about Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. The difference quotient. Does anybody remember what the difference quotient is? So I don't know if any other college algebra class taught this, but I didn't realize this, that this is also really the formula for slope. Because if you think about it, the top, isn't that the difference in y values? It's the difference in two y values, right? The y value of x, and then the x plus h is like, just add, just a little bit. It's gonna be a different y value, right? So I'm changing, I have the difference in the y value. And if I was to take the difference of this x value, isn't the difference here just the width of X? I mean, H, right? Because X plus H minus the first initial X value 
the x cancels out, I'll have h left. I'm like, yeah, it is. I always just thought it's different quotient or actually the way to find derivatives. However, then I think about it going, oh yeah, derivatives are just slow. Dang it, son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm slow too. It's okay. <laughs> are we okay so far? Yes? Yes? All right. <laughs> You're like, that chain guy is dumb. All right, so let's say I'm given Hmm, do I want to do that? Do that or do that? Oh, why not? F of X is equal to two square root of X. Which really, this is, this is part of the equation, isn't it? So now I have to find f of x plus h. So what is f of x plus h? Uh-oh. We forgot how to do that. That we forgot. Wait, how, how, where, what, what? Did we forget? Okay. <laughs> you guys make me laugh. All right, let me ask you guys this. If I ask you to find F of three, what would that equal to? So wherever the X is, you will replace it with three. Is that right? Okay. So how will we find f of x plus h? Wherever the x is, I'm going to replace it with x plus h, right? <laughs> because that's, that's all we did here, right? Wherever x is, we just replace it with 3. So we'll do the same thing here. So this is just going to be 2 square root of x plus h. Ta-da. I know that's typically the part that always makes me laugh because you got, it, it's like, it's really that simple. And you're like, no, 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 I can't be. But it is. Okay, so how do we find this? Plug it in. I'm gonna leave that there for now. Because I don't think you guys want to get into the math of the, this any deeper for now. So typically I will have things called oil, which means stands for on your own. I know it's very confusing. So find the difference quotient wow
Hmm. Yeah, I'll do something simple. So again, Desmos might be out this semester. I need the first half, well, second half. Only because I figured out how to do linear regression. I figured out how to do, well, all the other regressions. That's no big deal. It is a major seed that I don't think Desmos has. I know, I know. And then there's something else. Well, I haven't gone that far yet. But so the other thing that I'm going to ask you to do is start looking at offer up and Facebook uh, marketplace to see if anybody's selling their old guys for the SAS. I will have 12-ish PI to borrow for, for class time, but obviously not to rent out. Does that make sense? What's Lauren? You zoom in right in the straight back in. So it looks like minus is going to come. Okay. Where's where's your application? Yeah, that's right. Then this different portion, the 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 function actually goes away. Right, the different portion, this function actually gets canceled out. That's what typically happens. So you gotta find the application. Mm -hmm. Well, finish this. We can finish this. Oh. Yeah, but the, that right here is a little more complicated to finish, where this can be finished is pretty easy. So you've got an extra H squared, which means you've got like an extra H of twice and then a foil. And then what happens is that original F of X will go away. But remember the negative is the graph. Because you got to put the parentheses around this right here, just minus the half of that. Yeah. Well, you got to strip it over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That looks more, more right, more right. Uh, no. Because you have a plus one still. Yep, that will cancel out, but you still got to spoil this out. Right, you got to pull that out. Yeah, you're right. You're, you could have done that. That makes sense. Yeah, but you can't do this. Like, this is more complicated to figure out. This is not as fun. So you can figure that out. This one here, the way you would figure out, you actually have to do the time to get on the top. But then you got five of the denominator. We have two guys, two guys are talking by a house. All right, let's see what comes out. Can you see me now? Yep, you're following me? Okay. All right. So again, I need to find f of x plus h, which would be x plus h squared plus 1. 
f of x is x squared plus one. Over here, I do have to FOIL this out. And hopefully, now you know how to FOIL this out in your head, which is gonna come out as x squared plus two xh plus h squared plus one. And then this is still equal to x squared plus one. So now when I do the difference quotient, I'm gonna draw this line, put the h on the bottom. So I have is this. Let me make sure make this lower. Minus this. Do you see what I see? The stars, the stars shining through the night. We're okay? That all make sense so far? So what typically happens in the difference quotient is that the f of x function actually goes away. So the f of x function doesn't go away, guys. You have a problem. Well, we have a problem. Right. So if you look at the top, notice I put parentheses here around the f of x. Okay. And that's typically a, a big mistake that people make. So if I was to do this, hmm, no, I want to make it down further. So usually what I do is I stack this. So what I would do, actually, why did I do that? Here, let me do this. I guess it doesn't really matter. So I typically stack this. So when I distribute that negative through, I'm gonna have a negative x squared and a minus one. So while I actually have here, actually, yeah. While I actually have here on the top, it's going to be what? 2xh plus h squared over my h. I can put GCF of h out on top, cross out with the h on the bottom, so that I'm going to only have left a 2x plus h. Yes, sir. Say it again. Mm. So remember, there's two things, two ways I can cancel with the H on the bottom. One is that I can either separate this into two fractions, right? Which would still give me this, right? Because the H would cancel here. And one of the H's would cancel here, right? So it still give me that. Or, I don't know why I'm going <laughs> to backspace until I delete that. Or I could do this. I can put an H as a GCF on top. And now the H cancels, and I'm left with the 2x plus H. Make sense? I cannot, however, just cross these out, right? I can't just cross these two out and then call it a day. Because the H squared here is part of this family, part of this household. So that means I can't go into a household and kill someone or get rid of someone. I know in America it's frowned upon, but that's why I can't do that. <laughs> but a GCF will help me do that. Yes. No. No. 
So at any point in time, if you're ever wondering, split into two fractions and see what happens. So if you look at it, if the 2x didn't have the h and you split into two fractions, this will reduce, but this will still have an h on the denominator, right? Which essentially, if I was to cancel out the h right there, the h will have to be staying as a denominator on the other fraction. Not bad? Oh, wow. The class has ended. So ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and 